So what other sort of possibilities are there then for NASA to have be flying more payloads and have more programs like the Cruiser and like COTS? Well, one of the other programs that, that we're doing right now for the moon is um, the Google Lunar X Prize, you know, is out there. $30 million in prize money, $20 million to the first person that can land a, a lander on the moon privately, tra traverse 500 meters, and send back high-definition video. You get $20 bucks. There's $5 million bucks in, pri in bonus prizes and $5 million for second prize. Um, that's a hard problem. That's hard to do, and it's certainly going to cost you more than $20 million to win that prize. So the question is, is what happens after that? We... You know, this was Rob Kelso from the, the Johnson Space Center is the one that actually took the lead on this with, uh, with the, 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 the encouragement and help from NASA headquarters is putting in a program called ILDD, the Innovative Lunar Demonstration Data. So what NASA did is put out a solicitation for basically data um, from vehicle developers, mission developers, that were going after this, these kinds of lunar things because NASA wants to do exploration below Earth orbit. And so they put this program, which is another $30 million. We put out a solicitation. We gave out six. Um, these are what are called IDIQ, indefinite quantity, indefinite delivery um, contracts uh, with, these, with six of the competitors or wasn't exactly with the competitors, but with the people that are doing the competition, you know, that are building these systems to basically share data with, with NASA about how they do that so that we can kind of look over their shoulder and see um, how they're doing these things and what part of their processes NASA might want to look to adapt as it tries to, um, to streamline and, and improve its process. So this is kind of an experimentation um, that, that NASA is doing to look at that, and so there's $30 million out there on the table. So six companies with each company can get no more than $10 million. And in the grand scheme of things, $10 million isn't a lot of, of money, but when you're a small company, that can be a really big deal. Um, and so, so far, that, that's going quite well. Um, and the, the thing that's different about the, the ILDD from the, the um, Google Lunar X Prize is on the Google Prize, you don't get anything until you win the prize, where this, th that the most of it is, is there, but there is some money um, front-loaded that before you get to the moon that you can actually win, you know, in, in the hundreds of K. And when you're a small company, you know, that helps your cash flow a lot. So this is another way that we were trying to help out with kind of even out the cash flow for some of these companies. Um, because this would be very useful to, to, to NASA as well. And one of the other things that has been talked about is trying to take the cruiser model, which was basically buying rides on commercial vehicles and for instruments, and saying, could we apply that to the, the moon? If some of these guys are going to the moon, could you also um, buy rides to the moon for, to deliver instruments that would give the science community out there, the NASA science community data that would help them in their in their science. So, one of the things that we have at also have at Ames is the the, the NASA Lunar Science uh, Institute, uh, NLSI, and so um, we've been working with them to look explore some of these kinds of things as well as as the the NASA headquarters folks to say does this make sense? And so as that goes further along, and these guys can start demonstrating the capability to go to the moon privately, then I think that's another area that the government would at least consider expanding into, uh, as again, as being a customer. Um, it's a good deal for the government. You don't have to own and operate and all these things. You can just buy a ride and kind of buy it by the kilogram. Well, with the cruiser program, um, is it only going to be suborbital, or would you also have uh, programs with orbital as well? The reason I ask is SpaceX's rideshare program. Could yeah. that be a possibility? Well, and, and, you know, beyond COTS, there's the CRS, Commercial Resupply Services contract, which is the big contract and, and for, that both um, Orbital Sciences and SpaceX have for actual delivery of cargo to the International Space Station. So there, NASA is, I mean, and between the two of them, that's like $3.5 billion over five years. So that's big money compared to, to the actual, you know, COTS program. So that's where the big money is, and, and so NASA is stepping in in a big way to be an anchor customer for those guys to, to deliver, but they also, that the companies own the vehicles, they operate the vehicles, and they're um, able to sell those to other people as well. 
So again, this idea of the, the government stepping in and being an anchor customer, there's a long history of that, and um, it can be a very helpful thing, especially, but the difference here is you are a customer, you are not the customer or the only customer. So that, that's kind of one of the key distinctions here. And the idea that other people can then use that, again, it's a win-win because then the government doesn't have to pay for the whole thing of owning and operating that system um, because you can amortize the other customers that are in there now um, also help offset the, the cost of operating the system. So it's a nice win-win situation. Have you guys already been doing that, trying to get other uh, entities to fly on commercial launchers? Actually, that's not NASA's job. What, what NASA has tried to do is just make it easy for that to happen. Um, the, cus the companies are responsible for marketing this to other, other people. I mean, NASA helps out. You, you ask about you know, other areas that they're doing. NASA is sharing technology and expertise. That's part of the job um, here the, of, of making this technology available. Technology transfer is a, is a key goal right now of making the, the information that's in the, the federal laboratories available to the private sector and academia. But, and then to try to make it easy for these um, other users to come in and, and, and work with the system. For instance, one of the things I know there's a lot of effort now, the, this CASIS, this Center for the Advancement of Science in Space, um, that there's a nonprofit organization in Florida that was just set up um, and awarded a contract to help utilize the, the non-government portion of the, the ISS, the International Space Station, the, the national lab portion of that, and to make it easier for private entities to, uh, to fly to the space station. So that's part of what the government is doing on, on a bunch of these areas to just make it easier for the private sector to make use of the investment that NASA has made, like in, in the space station, which is a, quite a significant investment, um, and then open that up to the broader community now uh, of American entrepreneurs and scientists and technologists that would like to use this unique facility. And so they're doing a number of things like that to try to make it easier. Since we're talking about the space station, what do you think about some of, some of these commercial companies' proposals to continue the life of the, of the space station after um, the 2020 or 2028 date? Well, one is NASA's considering that it, itself. So the, the NASA's looking at, at actually extending beyond the 2020. I'm trying to do that privately. Um, I, I don't know enough about it. Um, but there's other things. Again, the government isn't the only player here. You've got you know, Bob Bigelow um, out there and... Bigelow has made a, a significant investment in this idea of habitation modules in, in space. He's just waiting for the transportation. Um, Excalibur Almaz, you know, and, and some other players out there that have, uh, have intentions to do this. So, again, it's not like the government has a monopoly on this, um, but that is the one facility that exists right now. Um, whether some, a private entity can take that over, remember there's also 16 international partners that are involved in this as well. So it could get, uh, could get quite interesting trying to, to negotiate that, but it's certainly worth looking into. Now, I just think that this is a really exciting time. I mean, uh, I've been uh, interested in this whole area of commercial space uh, since basically I put on my first conference back in 1979 on the 10th anniversary of the first lunar landing. And a lot of us had been hoping for this, you know, in every since then. And to see it starting to happen now is, is really exciting. So I think that uh, these are really exciting times. And I think that um, this is just the beginning of, of what I think will be. I think we're at a tipping point and, and the future could be very exciting. And uh, uh, some of the things that we've, a lot of us have dreamed about for the last, you know, 20 or 30 years could finally start coming true.